So now to wrap up our journey through the wide and expansive endocrine system, we're going to be finishing with the adrenal glands. And we'll entitle this next flowchart Adrenal Glands 1. And in this flowchart, I suggest looking at figure 45.20a. And in the next flowchart, it will be 45.20b, which we'll write down a little bit later when we get to that one. So, adrenal glands. What we want to sort of break this word down to is ad, which means next to, and then renal. Renal is actually the reference or the word that refers to kidney. So, let's do a little bit of background information before we get into the specifics of this uh, part of the endocrine system. Background. Adrenal glands are going to be on top of each kidney, and thus the name adrenal. So, kidney is the renal system. It's a part of the renal system. And the adrenal glands are on top of each of those renals, those kidneys. Now, what's the job of the adrenal glands? Their job is to respond to stress. Adrenal glands helps body adjust to stress. And this is something that we experience almost every single day. And certain levels of stress are good, but too much are bad. And there has to be some sort of balance. The adrenal glands are great at maintaining a normal balance of stress uh, of stress that's being combated and stress that's being uh, sort of dealt with in the correct and possible form. So the adrenal gland is also split into two parts. Uh, one part we'll do in this video and then the other part we'll do in the final conclusion to endocrine system two. And that will be, these two parts are the adrenal medulla, which we'll do in this video. So that's called the adrenal medulla. And also there's going to be the adrenal cortex. So what is, which are these? What are they? The medulla of the adrenal glands is the uh, central part of the adrenal glands. Central. It's on the inside, actually. So it's the middle, medulla, for that reason. And the cortex, whenever you see cortex in any sort of anatomical feature, it always means the outside. It's This is the outer part of the adrenal glands. What you want to remember about the adrenal glands, therefore, is that this is actually a difference between the, this is actually a division, let's say, of resources because the adrenal medulla and the adrenal cortex are both two distinct glands that are found within the larger gland that is the adrenal gland. Okay, So they are two distinct glands that have their two distinct functions and that's why we're going to separate them when we talk about them in the next two videos. So first and foremost, let's look at the adrenal medulla. What does it do? What's its job? Why is it important? Adrenal medulla. So, the adrenal medulla helps the body adjust to stress. That's part of the background for e both of these, the medulla and the cortex. So, what I want you to understand about the adrenal medulla, first of all, as a side note, write down that it's a neuroendocrine uh, sort of cell. It's a neuroendocrine tissue, better term, meaning that it's going to be involved in some sort of neuroendocrine pathway that releases neurohormones. Okay? So, let's look at this. What's going to happen here is that the adrenal medulla is going to be in charge of the production of an alarm reaction. Production of what we can term an alarm reaction. What is an alarm reaction? This is actually just a different or a fancier way, I guess, of saying the fight or flight reaction. Something many people have heard before, even those who haven't studied biology. There's a natural urge to either fight or flight in times of extreme stress. That's the key here. We're talking about extreme stress. So what happens in the normal sort of situation is that the adrenal medulla, in order to prepare for the fight or flight reaction, it's going to be continuously, continuously, let me rewrite that, continuously secreting two hormones in small amounts. Secretes two specific hormones that we need to know in rather small amounts. So in a normal scenario, let's say, when there's not sort of a necessary need for a fight or flight, let's say, there are going to be two fight or flight hormones that are secreted in a small sort of, a very little amount, let's say. Epinephrine is one of them, 
and this is something we actually saw in that one hormone many effects flow chart from the last lecture. This is otherwise just known as adrenaline and also norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. I want to make sure I spell this right. Nephrine. There we go. Also, you could already see here that there's some sort of relation to the kidney because there's this nef root, and the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. So hopefully you can see that distinction, and actually that connection, I should say, rather, between the adrenal and the nef hormones that are released from it, the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. Key idea right now is that they're continuously secreted in small amounts from the adrenal medulla, which is in charge of the alarm reaction, the fight or flight. So let's say we have a fight or flight reaction. Let's say this needs to be done. That would be during a time of extreme stress. So let's write this down as during extreme stress. A murderer is chasing you. That is extreme stress that I'm talking about. Um, this is going to be our sort of starting stimulus. This is what's going to start everything in this hormone cascade. So let's do the hormone cascade for these two hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine, and look at the downstream physiological effects. So what we of course have is that almighty hypothalamus, and that hypothalamus is stimulated. It's stimulated by this extreme amount of stress in the sense that it's going to say, okay, this is kind of weird. There's somebody chasing us. There's a murderer chasing us. So I'm going to uh, get in charge the fight or flight system of the body. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to talk via nerve impulses. So not actually a hormone in this situation. The hypothalamus sends nerve impulses to the adrenal medulla. Now you might be wondering, why doesn't it just send a hormone like it always does? Nerve impulses are actually so much faster than a hormone. A hormone has to travel to the blood and hopefully reach the right cell and then get into the cell, connect with the receptor, etc. Nerve impulses are split-second messages that are sent quickly, directly to where it needs to be sent to. Look where we're sending this message to. A murderer is chasing us. We need the fight-or-flight reaction fast. We cannot wait for a hormone to be either lipid-soluble or water-soluble and go through the blood and get to this region. We have to do this fast. So there's going to be a nerve impulse that quickly sends a message to the adrenal medulla to say, hey, murderer chasing us. What are we going to do now? Adrenal medulla says, I got this. And it gets activated. What does this activation cause? The adrenal medulla, upon activation, will then immediately cause this release of lots, of lots, 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 not small. Now it's a change. Look at the change that we have here. A release of lots of those two hormones, those two fight or flight hormones of epinephrine, and I'll just write nor for norepinephrine. And also I want to make sure this is actually going to be done quite quickly. Why is it being done quickly? Why is it being done in great amounts? Well, that's because a murderer is chasing us and we need to either fight or flight. We need to do something about this very big extreme stress stimulus that has just been uh, propagated throughout our body. So what is the response after epinephrine and norepinephrine are released? What good do they do for the body? Well, they do something very important during this. They cause fight or flight. Essentially, fight or flight is going to cause the increase of blood flow, the superior increase of blood flow to organs. Whenever you increase blood flow to organs, you are doing something good because what you're doing is you're allowing your brain, a structure that needs a lot of blood. You're allowing your muscles, another structure that needs a lot of blood, and allowing your heart, another structure that needs a lot of blood to function successfully and efficiently and fast and quickly and make the decisions and make the movements and continue to pump blood throughout the whole body as fast as possible because you need to either run or fight or you need to do something about this murder. And thus, this increase of blood flow to these critical organs is going to allow that. In addition, because there's more blood flow, this actually causes a direct increase in your reaction time. So a lot of the times people say that when there's this adrenaline rush through them, let's say during a sports moment, okay, during some sort of sports, uh, some, some sort of sporting event where they have this feeling of an adrenaline rush, they perform so much better than when they perform in practice. Why is that? It's because you're on the big stage. The big stage gives you so much of this good stress, let's say, in this situation, not a murderer, 
that stress is going to cause these nerve impulses to activate the epinephrine and norepinephrine, norepinephrine to rush through your body, adrenaline rush, right? And that's going to increase your reaction time and increase your ability to do well on that specific field or on that specific court, whatever it may be. That's why a lot of athletes say, I love that adrenaline rush that this sport gives me. And that's what happens here. In addition, what you're also going to be doing, or let's say not doing, would be a less blood flow to things that are not important right now. If a murderer is chasing you, or if you're trying to hit the game-winning shot, there's going to be less blood flow to the digestive system and also to the reproductive system. Because right now, you're not thinking about digesting your meal, and you're sure not thinking about making a baby. So reproduction and digestion is going to be sort of put to the side. So that's our increased blood flow. Why does that happen? Because epinephrine and norepinephrine are causing it to happen. In addition, epinephrine and norepinephrine, this is all useless actually, unless the other part of epinephrine and norepinephrine also works. Their other function would be to break down stored glycogen, which is a stored form of glucose, into, of course, the usable form of glucose. Break down glycogen to glucose. Okay, what good is that? What does this provide the body? This provides the body immediate energy. And if you can already see the theme here, you need energy because you're rushing all this blood to all of these organs. What good is that blood unless it's carrying within it some sort of energy, some sort of molecule that's good like glucose? Because glucose can be easily and quickly converted into and efficiently converted into ATP and thus this will increase the metabolic rate. Thus, when you have the increase in metabolic rate, you will have an increase in overall O2 delivery throughout the body. An increase in O2 delivery throughout the body will allow for an increase in heart rate, which is necessary right now because you need to run fast away from this murderer or you need to attack this murderer and you need to make sure that the heart rate is staying at a nice high pumping rate. You also need to increase the stroke volume. Stroke volume just means the amount of blood being pumped in every single pump of the heart, let's say, and you also need to increase your uh, breathing overall. And that will all be done because you're increasing your oxygen delivery. How are you increasing your oxygen delivery? Well, you have a lot more energy for your cells to do metabolic work, and thus oxygen will be spread throughout the body much faster. This is fascinating to me. It's absolutely amazing that these things happen within our bodies through a moment of an external moment like stress, something that scares us, let's say, or something that really urges us to do something, that's going to cause these amazing downstream effects to give us these amazing capabilities that we as humans have. And that covers our first look at the adrenal medulla, part of the adrenal glands. We'll conclude in the next video about the adrenal cortex.